American Airlines made headlines when they announced the end of first class. And that's why we'll be traveling in this most luxurious way of crossing the country one last time to show you exactly what the end of first class is all about. But first, we need to clear one thing up. What is first class? Now, here in the United States, on most domestic flights, the top level of service on board many airlines is called first class, but it's not what you may imagine. We made a whole video about this. I'll link to it below. But here at American Airlines, on certain domestic and international routes, they've always offered what they call flagship first, or at least they have until now. Let's get into it. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in Los Angeles, about to head to New York City on the last true first class here in the United States. Join me. Let's go get checked in and get this trip started. The flagship first experience starts with a dedicated check-in area. We actually struggle to find it. And once we did, our names were cross-referenced with a list, and we were in. It felt more like an exclusive L.A. club than an airport. All of this luxury will end sometime in 2024, but can be had for as little as $200 more than business class. Keep watching to decide for yourself whether it's worth it. That was the easiest TSA experience I've ever had. We had an escort all the way to the front of the line, straight through easy as pie. But for now, it's time to head to the flagship first lounge, so let's check it out. Hate to be brutal about it, but this is just not as nice as the other terminals uh, here at JFK. No, we're not at JFK. Hate to be brutal about it, but this is just not quite as nice as the other terminals here at LAX. Keeping track of where we are is harder than it looks. Now, the good news about this terminal is it looks like it's getting ready to undergo a renovation. Can't wait to see what it looks like after they finish this. Once we got into the lounge, we were given special passes to access the airline's nicest lounge within a lounge, the flagship lounge. The most impressive aspect of this place has to be the sweeping views of the ramp, including of the special A321 boarding up for JFK. It's the flight just before ours. You see, American chose to configure 16 of their A321s in a premium heavy layout with four classes of service. They call this the A321T, T for transcontinental. They reserve these aircraft for the most exclusive cross-country routes, usually between New York or Boston and the West Coast. And maintaining this fleet within a fleet of special airplanes is a major cost to the airline. That's one reason American is getting rid of first class. But don't worry, international business class is not going anywhere. In fact, it's going to get even better. But more about that in a minute. There's champagne. As soon as we walked in, we got a glass of champagne. This is unbelievable. Unfortunately, the flagship dining is closed. Uh, you know, when I was here before, that was a really nice feature, but uh, the buffet looks amazing. This is some of the best buffet food I've ever had. The lounge is massive with plenty of seating. Unfortunately, the plugs don't seem to be working. I'd be happy to plane spot here all day. And here's the only reminder of the former a la carte restaurant called Flagship First Dining. With this restaurant shuttered, there's no longer really any distinction in lounge offerings between a Flagship First and Flagship Business Ticket. Flagship First routes have included trips between the Northeast and West Coast cities. Also, trips to places like Hong Kong and London have offered this elevated experience on certain 777 aircraft. It's time to hop on this bird. Let's go. Well, there's our plane. Unfortunately, you can't see it very well, which is too bad. I hate these gates where you can't see the plane. You know what I mean? Despite that first world setback, our first class tickets meant we were in group one, and that meant we were among the first to board. Once we were on the plane, it was clear what makes this experience so special. There are not too many narrow body airplanes with seating arranged in a one one configuration. This means we're going to have plenty of room to spread out. This seat truly has it all.
American is the last U.S. airline offering a true first-class experience. United phased it out in 2018, and Delta never offered a true first-class product at all. Cheers. We pushed back right on time for our four-hour and 49-minute flight. It was not hard to sit back, relax, and enjoy this trip. LAX has to be one of the most exciting airports in the world. So much aviation action here. And with those three windows, it was easy to drink it all in. It was our turn with the runway. The seat has a massive screen. I've been fortunate enough to travel in flagship first on this airplane three times and unfortunately, I've had the same problem each time. The touchscreen feature just does not work. And I can kind of understand why. They're old, the airline is dumping first class, so there's no real reason to fix it, but it was still frustrating. Even the handset proved challenging, but with some effort I was able to get it to work. And this moving map is great. My favorite feature of just about any first class experience is the sheer amount of space you get. This tray table was massive, and thanks to the additional space up to the right, I was able to watch a movie, get work done, and eat all at the same time. It was great. The noise canceling headphones to borrow while on board were okay, but for better ones, head to greenergrass.com slash headphones. And the Wi-Fi, which cost $29 for the whole flight, was fast and reliable. The amenity kit, made in partnership with Shinola, was also a nice touch and had more than enough in it to make this trip a little more comfortable. Service began with a warm towel, along with nuts, olives, and a gin and tonic. Our routing today was spectacular as we passed by Canyonlands National Park in Utah. We also had stunning views of Arches National Park, which we'd visited on the Rockies to Red Rocks train last year. I'll link to that video below. I pulled my eyes away from the window long enough to check out the menu. If you'd like to see it in more detail, head to greenergrass.com slash menus. I started with a beer cheese soup and the salmon. Now the salmon was practically perfect. Suzanne started with the harissa carrots, which she liked. We passed Grand Mesa, a spot that's eluded me nearly every time I've passed near it. If you've seen our Rockies to Red Rocks video or California Zephyr video, you'll know what I mean. For the main course, we both had the lamb cutlets. The mustard and pistachio pesto crust was a bit much. By the time dessert arrived, we'd reached the Great Plains. I had the butter cake and Suzanne had the ice cream sundae. After such a massive meal, it was time for a walk. As I mentioned, there are four cabins on board. Both main cabin and main cabin extra are arranged in a 3-3 configuration. Business class is set up as 2-2. And of course, first class, you're now familiar with it, is configured in a 1-1 setup. There were always snacks available at the front of the cabin. Suzanne decided to take a nap, so she put the seat into bed mode. And with all of the Casper branded bedding American Airlines provides, it's easy to get comfortable, even though the footwell is a little narrow. So if first class really is this fabulous, why is it going away? Well, first of all, there just isn't too much of a distinction between first and business class anymore. Lie flat business class is becoming the norm. There's just not too much room for differentiation of a first class product anymore. Even on this flight, if we booked business class, we would have gained access to the same lounge, had a lay-flat seat and similar onboard food offerings, all for a lower ticket price. So while it was fun to splurge on first class one last time, it wasn't really necessary for a daytime cross-country flight under five hours. In other words, it's the massive improvements in business class offerings that have killed off true first class. But it's not all bad news. With the announcement that first class would be discontinued, American has announced a new business class product coming to their airplanes. It's called Flagship Suites, and to be honest, 
it looks like an improvement over their current flagship First Hard product. It should also be noted that American is still going to sell first class on domestic flights. It's just not the first class you typically think of. As the sun sets on this day and on flagship first, it's time to rate the experience using the Jeb score. First, the lounge. It's truly spectacular. Not quite as impressive as United's Polaris, and it was disappointing that the flagship dining room is not reopened. It's still extremely nice. Four stars here. The seat itself is nicer than just about anything you'll find on any other U.S. carrier, excepting possibly JetBlue's Mint Studio Suite. American earns five stars for their seat. The food was remarkable. I've heard it's the same food they offer in business class on these routes, but plated differently? Whether that's true, I'm not sure, but regardless, they earn five stars for the execution here. The IFE is a real downer on this flight. I could eventually get it to work, but it was way harder than it should have been. Despite the massive screen, loads of choices, and fast Wi-Fi, the frustration it induced drags the score down to three stars. The service was, as you'd expect, great. That's really what sets a first-class experience apart from anything else. And the flight attendants were available and downright joyful at every interaction. Five stars for them. And before we total that up, I've got to say how sorry I am that this special experience is nearly gone. While they haven't announced a final date for it, it's coming fast. And that really is too bad. Stepping on board this true first class is almost like a flashback to a bygone era. And I, for one, am sorry it's going away. In any event, American Airlines flagship first from LAX to JFK earns 22 out of a possible 25 stars. Between now and the next time, see in the sky.